right, well, that's done. And the mold definitely needs, these wires are deeply embedded. But just a little bit of time, gently pulling that out. And it's coming out nicely. You're always going to get rubber flowing in different areas. It's going to be confusing. All right, it's going well. I've basically cast the monster clay, which once you heat it up, turns into a liquid. And I've put it into our rubber mold here. And it's come out, and it's come out pretty good. Basically, all the details there, I'm loving it. And you can see, I don't know if you can see up close there, but you know, it's got all the detail and it's in plasticine, which means I can start manipulating it. One of the things I discovered once I used our mold and did a wax cast, and from there I was able to measure the wax, convert it into the silver. I was about a kilo and a half over what I was expecting. The clients agreed to uh, extra silver and so we power along once again which is great and i mean the client's not losing any money because they're retaining the price of the silver i'm not asking any more for the actual job so it's looking good and let's continue on i'm at that awkward stage where you're basically going into the unknown and there's only one way to actually do that is that's with mistakes and mistakes are definitely the most important part of making art uh, you could actually say that all of making art is really mistakes that have been able to uh, pan out in some way uh, And it's a discovery As you can see I've gridded up the book. I don't know if you can see those faint lines across there uh, And then I just started cutting one of the sections up. I noticed an interesting thing when you see the TV glitch of, for example whenever my partner is making a cake or using the bar mix or something like that in the other room the TV will glitch and you know the pixelations will jump up. That variety of pixelations is actually the discussion that the uh, digital responder is having with the interrupted signal and it's desperately trying to make the full screen. But what I noticed is that it was sort of like bits of information and then they're like a little rectangular shape basically sort of uh, enlarge that the dimensions of those pixels up to something that would fit into this book dynamic and uh, it's interesting because really what the technology is trying to project an image you're trying to decipher an image but in that you're you're getting this communication this actual raw communication between the, the technology or the the machine and you uh, machine and you are trying to negotiate some kind of agreed reality and uh, who knows where that's going to end up down the track anyway let's keep going <laughs> I've been sort of carefully looking at that because there's a hell of a lot of information you can see that there's bigger blocks there there's a hell of a lot of information in that pixelated state and what we're actually looking at here is we're looking at the early communication or the early behavior it's of that animal. It's communicating something quite unique about itself. So uh, one of the things I realized about this is that it's not a three-dimensional experience. Obviously, it's a two-dimensional screen that we're looking at. And so how do you translate that uh, two-dimensional information into a three-dimensional state? Really a communication, it's not uh, a concept and so it exists in a very uh, instantaneous and random kind of way so trying to communicate that into a 3d form I think is, is quite difficult but then I think when you think about it you observe nature and like everything with art if you're really observing the nature of things that's always your source of great inspiration interesting thing I noticed about my original proposal it was a swirl um, like a sort of a distortion swirl that I put in the center of the book or roughly when I start to do that and try and bring that into a three-dimensional form it's totally didn't work uh, because then I, I start to think about it I thought that actually is a, a video or an analog distortion uh, from an aerial or whatever so actually the digital a glitch is quite different from an analog glitch and when I this was mixing the two together uh, it just didn't look quite right so 
And so I'm sticking purely to the digital signal. And I think uh, as time goes by, you know, young people get older, they forget about uh, whatever television or analog signals used to look like. And I'm pretty sure we're going to stick with a digital approach. In fact, it's definitely taking over. So hopefully, uh, as the years go by, this book will stay visually relevant. Uh, even though I was thinking, you know, the signal will get better and there'll be less opportunities for that signal interruption. But then I somehow think when new technologies come in, uh, you're always getting this teething period. So the digital uh, visual language will pop up and uh, I don't think we'll ever really escape it from now on. So it'll definitely be a part of humanity for a long time and um, hopefully the visually that, you know, people will be able to relate to this book. Well the deadline the is looming very fast. It takes a week for the foundry to make the shell, the mould for the silver, and uh, you know I'm running very close to the end of the deadline here, and you know it's a week I can't afford. But now you might be wondering why am I acid etchings a copper plate? Basically, what I'm trying to do is get some really nice lettering happening. Uh, and it has to be detailed. And the only way to get it really is to take it off the computer and to make it into a relief. So basically the letters are set in. Uh, this was the only technique I could really work out that was going to work. So uh, I've swung into that. I've had it in the acid bath for about three hours and it's come out looking pretty good. So I'm just going to clean it up. Now I'm no expert at this. My partner who's a jeweler definitely is and you know what's bizarre because I know nothing about this process when I poured the ferric chloride into the mix into the water I just sort of slopped it in yeah, the jar heated up to an incredible temp and uh, but because I didn't mix it it got this like glass like substance at the bottom I don't know if that's good who cares because it works and honestly I don't have any time to think about anything else so yeah, let's get this PMP paper off. I don't know what PMP is abbreviated for, but uh, all I know is they use it for circuit boards. I'm basically doing the same thing as you would do, eating out a circuit board, same chemicals. Uh, and you're washing it off with the acetone. And let's see what it looks, because let's cut to the chase. Acetone evaporates like nothing else. But yes, it's coming off beautifully. Um, yeah, it's going to take a little while, but it's great because you're getting that um, blue of the acetone getting stuck in to the text and you're really seeing what it's going to look like at the end of the day. You iron on the PNP paper and you've got to get it quite hot. This is the thing I had to discover. It didn't go on that great. A lot of the air bubbles and the air bubbles created little pockets where the PMP paper didn't stick so a little bit of nail polish is a very good alternative so I just touched it all up with that luckily the text came through pretty good all right the acetones completely removed the PMP paper and it looks great um, but the black in it I don't know if you can see but we can catch it with the light there it will look like that in silver with the oxidization going the black oxidization going into the text I mean, it's a pity we're not using this copper plate. What we are doing is we're making a mould of this copper plate. And then I'm casting it basically in the monster clay. So let's have a look at the book. Now, I don't know if you can get the overall effect, but the book is basically glitching and moving and in this sort of position where it's uh, glitching and fragmenting. I'm not sure if it's been that successful. Uh, it looked fantastic when I did the book proper. But uh, this has been a dimension. It was definitely part of the concept. So I'll be working on this tonight and really trying to bring it home and make it look like, you know, it's a two-dimensional glitch translated into the 3D, which is quite difficult. But uh, it's coming along.